Welcome to Redstone class. Today we'll discuss advanced falling blocks, go over four principles, and we'll show you some tricks you can do with it. We'll show how it matters to Redstone, and then we'll have some homework as usual. So, first principles. So the first principle is that it can rest on any block. So we can rest on any block, but it cannot stop on any block. If the block is not a solid block, you will see that it will fall. So if I were to break this block, all of these are going to break when they land on redstone dust because they can't sit on top of it. And the same thing is true with these. I have this all the way up to the sky limit, and there's something you should know about gravel is if it breaks in this way, it's never going to produce flint. Um, you, if you don't recognize it, this is the old school texture for gravel. But this is going to continue to fall, and it will just fall and fall. You're never going to get any flint from gravel that doesn't fall, or that doesn't uh, that isn't broken by the player like this. So if it breaks and it lands on a regular block, it'll be just fine. But any of these blocks, it won't. So you'll notice that they will combine inside of a cobweb. And when they reach the bottom, they can't be there, and so they'll drop as a drop item. And so if I remove these, those are going to stay there. So the second principle is that it can float in midair, and it will fall when it is updated. So when one of these falls, all of the others are going to fall. So if I were to try and place a block right here, they would all go down. It doesn't matter what block. See, they'll all fall down like that. And you could see there were particles underneath that give you a warning that they'll fall. The third principle, see all of those are destroyed. The third principle uh, is that they will allow entities to fall inside of them. And so if I'm on top of this block and it falls, I'll fall faster than it and I'll be inside of it when it falls. So I break this when the torch is on. You see how I fell into it and was pushed out? There's some very interesting implications of that we'll get to in a bit. But entities will fall inside of it if they're standing on it when it falls. So finally, they have physics because they are entities. And so if I place one on this bubbles coming from this soul sand block into these water source blocks, you'll see that it floats, which is kind of neat. And it can also bounce if it's hit by a sticky uh, a slime block at the right moment. So something you should know about this is these falling blocks, and it doesn't matter whether it's gravel or concrete or what have you, they will die after 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, you're going to see that this turns back, and it's probably time almost up, but it's going to drop as a drop item. See? And the same will happen with any other block. Oh, I placed it where the water is. My bad. It got placed in water and it decided to be concrete. So if we place this here. Oh, that's right. Um, you don't get that behavior with uh, powdered concrete. You only get the behavior with water and gravel because powdered concrete turns into concrete. And you can see that one died. But we can have fun with it. Boing, you can make fun things with this. So let's go over some tricks. So the first trick I want to show you is the classic trick, which uh, actually one last pr part of the principle with falling is that they will break on when they crash. So if this piston is pushed up too quickly, it'll be inside of it because it's falling, and it'll have nowhere to go, so it broke. You see that? So that's something to know. If I were to go slowly, it'll be fine. But if I go quickly... Well, it's not having an issue right now. Maybe it has to have a block on site on top of it. See? And so it'll break sometimes. So anyway, first trick is going to be the torch trick. So if you don't know this, this is very useful in survival, which is that while you're mining, you'll run into some gravel, and you'll be like, oh no, I don't have a shovel, or I don't want to have to pull my shovel out and deal with this. So if you were to be on survival and you place a torch, it'll clear all of that. Be mindful of water or lava coming down when that happens, but it's a nice way to get rid of all of this quickly. So, the next trick I'm going to show you is for digging down through lava. This is really useful in the nether when you're trying to get down to mine for netherite if you're in a lava ocean. But ultimately, what you can do is you can build out over lava, and you can drop it, and it will land once it hits the bottom of the lava. You don't know how deep the lava is, but it will fall, and if you're careful, 
you can just keep filling it up until it fills it up. And what you can do with this is you can fill in a plus and then you can dig it out. And so you could put a ladder in here and you could be in the middle of a lava ocean and you could dig down through the lava by doing pillars of sand or gravel here. So that's something useful to know. So the next one is how you might make it float in midair like that. It's almost impossible to do in modern Minecraft, but there are still ways to do it. Because anything that would cause it to be floating would cause a block update. Except for this method. So right here, we have some sticky pistons that are trying to pull some slime blocks. We'll discuss those later. But if we were to have a block that cannot be pushed into or pulled by a slime block like this, what's going to happen is these pistons think they're going to be able to pull, and they will fail. And because of that, they think that they're going to be able to pull, so they think that this is going to be underneath the sand, so they will not tell these blocks to update. And so now, there is no block next to these, and they are floating. And so that is a way to create floating sand blocks if you'd like to do it. The key thing, the key takeaway in why we're doing this video is it actually has implications in redstone. Anything that moves can be used for redstone in Minecraft, and this is no exception. So let's say you didn't have any sticky pistons. You could still make contraptions like this that ordinarily rely on sticky pistons by just using gravity. And so if I have a piston that pushes these up and down, we can cause this to disconnect redstone and reconnect redstone by powering sand or gravel blocks. You can see that it works with gravel too. And so that gives us the ability to control redstone circuits using just sand or gravel or concrete powder, if you like. With concrete powder, you could color code it any of the 16 colors. So if you remember my discussion of entities being able to fall into this, one of the big implications of that is that you can suffocate from above, not just from below. You might think of the idea of dropping sand and gravel on top of enemies for traps, but you can also time it where they fall into a block, and then they fall into the next block, and then they fall into the next block. So if I were to, say, disconnect this, um, that actually changed more than I wanted it to change. So let me... Um, Let me actually fix this. So if I were to, we're just going to go ahead and show you how it works, rather than showing it to you piece by piece. So if I were to fall into it, just like I did over here, so over here we had, let's say we had a torch here, and then we had a block on top of it, just as I would fall into it like this, I would fall, and then I would fall in again, and then I would fall again, and then I would be taking suffocation damage. And so if I were to do this on survival mode, I fall, fall, fall. And so I fell all the way down to the bottom of it. I sank into it like quicksand. So that's something you can do as well. So that's it for this video. Your homework is to do one of these things you've never seen before. And so if you want to try to do a suffocation trap, it's a little bit more sophisticated, but you could do this. Um, otherwise, Try to make it bounce or float, because that's fun to do. Just place this with a two-block gap between this and the tripwire string with a one-tick delay, and that'll cause it to bounce. You can bounce it like so. Or try to make it float, like I showed you. That's it. Class is dismissed.